It is no secret that boxing or any full contact sport is very different from other kinds of activities. The stakes are very high, mistakes are detrimental not only to the outcome of the match but also to your health. Which begs the question, how do you psychologically prepare yourself for a sport where you're gonna stand toe to toe with an opponent in front of hundreds to thousands of spectators with cameras flashing in your face and so forth? You might be able to spar 20 rounds in training, yet when it comes to a competitive setting, you might gas out very quickly. Why is that? There are many contributing factors, but let's focus on one of the most significant and ironically one of the least discussed. Your body has two physiological systems that are constantly calibrating to each other. We have the parasympathetic system and the sympathetic system. When you are calm and relaxed, the parasympathetic system is dominant. It is also known as rest and digest. It decreases your heart rate, it promotes digestion, it basically encourages rest and low energy function when the body is calm. And typically this system is dominant when the heart rate is below 100 beats per minute. And then once we pass this barrier, we get to the sympathetic nervous system. The muscles will start to tense up, they will be more forceful, airways will open up, the body will pump more blood to musculature, and when extreme effort is exerted and the body perceives a situation as threatening, it will start to involve the endocrine system, which will start releasing stress hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol and things like this. And these will be increased in direct proportion to the intensity of the exercise and how much you regard the situation as stressful. You have now entered the fight or flight response. Although you can achieve great feats of athleticism in this state, it comes at a huge cost. And if taken out of proportion, you will experience what is popularly known as the adrenaline dump. Essentially, when you are in the familiar grounds of your training club and you're doing sparring and drilling, you are not perceiving the situation as stressful as if you were in a competitive setting. A competitive match in boxing has a very aggressive connotation to it. When you are in there, your body probably perceives this as a life and death situation. So a huge chunk of your training as a boxer must go for regulating this fight or flight response so that you can make good decisions in a match and be relaxed and conserve energy. And this is what Soviet boxing coaches wanted to instill in their boxing. Relaxation was a cornerstone in the Soviet boxing system, both mentally and physically. If you watch Soviet boxers, you can see that they are incredibly relaxed and fluid and whippy. I can assure you that this does not happen by accident. There are countless of hours of training behind this. And the Soviet coaches coined this as voluntary relaxation. This implies that you intentionally and willingly choose to enter such a state rather than blindly pursuing an activity and hoping for the best. The mind and the body were seen as two aspects of a unified whole. So if you relax your mind, your body will be relaxed in turn. And if you relax your body, your mind will be relaxed. And Soviet coaches tackled both of these. And this field of the unification of the mind and the body, that is emotional processes and physiological reactions, is known as psychosomatic medicine. Now let us go through the precise methods that the Soviet sports scientists implemented. Autogenic training is a form of self-hypnosis originally developed by Johannes Schulz. After countless obsessions with patients, a pattern was beginning to emerge. Patients would often mention some kind of sensation of heaviness in the limbs and a strange feeling of warmth. It was then concluded that hypnosis was not something that the instructor did to the patient, but rather something that the patient allowed to happen naturally. So there had to be some kind of a switch that changed the physiological processes in the body so you can reach this state of relaxation and hypnosis. In other words, he encouraged a bottom-up approach that is by consciously mimicking the body language and physiological symptoms of this relaxed state. If heavy arms and heavy legs is a symptom of relaxation, by consciously adopting such a state, you will, by a bottom-up approach, induce relaxation in turn. And to really solidify this, he collaborated with another researcher called Oskar Vogt, who was a pioneer in brain research. And Vogt had reported through his studies that patients could consciously produce sensations of heaviness and warmth by shifting into a self-hypnotic trance. 
So in combination with the research of Vogt and Schulz's thousands of hours of experience working with patients, he identified a few key bodily processes that induce relaxation. And those included heaviness, warmth, heartbeat, breath, regulation of the core, and a cool forehead. And research has suggested that when you emphasize those, the symptoms related to stress and anxiety go down in turn. That is reduced heart rate, reduced muscular tension, reduced blood pressure, and many other symptoms. So if these symptoms go down, they will increase your boxing performance and economy of movement and decision making, primarily by regulating the fight or flight response once again. So it is no wonder why Soviet sports psychologists decided to implement autogenic training in their arsenal. Now let us go through all of the steps a little bit more in depth. Heaviness is related to the musculature. Muscular relaxation is probably the easiest and the quickest of all of these to achieve because we can easily distinguish between a relaxed and a tense muscle. Now what does heaviness have to do with relaxation you may ask? It is important to distinguish that heaviness in this case means that your muscles simply sink down due to gravity rather than making a deliberate effort to tense them. Hence, heaviness in this case is more associated with a form of limpness. So part of this exercise is that you progressively go from your upper limbs to your lower limbs and imagine them being heavy and just sinking down. For example, if you're at your arm, you can start with your dominant arm and state, my left arm is sinking down due to gravity, and actually envision and feel it happening. Repeat this multiple times, let's say six times, and then move to the other side. And then change to the musculature of the lower body. If you do this correctly, your body should start feeling loose and limp, and Soviet boxers, they would obviously implement countless of mental and physical relaxation exercises similar to this before training sessions and competitions. Now I would argue that the shoulders are of especial importance when it comes to relaxation and heaviness, so give extra attention to this aspect. Why warmth you may ask? Once again, it must be emphasized that autogenic training is a psychosomatic exercise, which means that it assumes that the bodily processes are connected to psychological and emotional processes. And the exercise of warmth in this case has the intention of affecting blood flow to the region imagined, and this is done by opening up the blood vessels. So just like the heaviness drill, start progressively from the top to the bottom. Start with the shoulders, then go to the arm, and then the legs, etc. Start with the dominant limb first and affirm to yourself, my left arm is warm, I can feel it progressively building up, I can sense the temperature rising to a pleasant extent. If done correctly, you should obviously feel an inner warmth to a certain extent, and for some people, this will already be evident with the previous heaviness drill. If so, so much the better. Now the intention here is about feeling your heart actually working. You must feel its activity and hear the beats, which varies a lot with people. It may sound a bit new agey and nonsensical, but chances are you have felt this in either states of excitement or stress or even sickness. So voluntarily putting yourself in a state where you can feel it requires a lot of practice. For beginners, you can start by placing your hand on your chest or even lying down, which will make it even easier. And with time, you will start to feel it more casually. Now there are two forms of breathing, one is automatic and one is intentional. We must emphasize that with the goal of autogenic training, the breathing should not be intentional as you would do in guided meditation sessions or yoga, because AT assumes that any intentional or overly intentional maneuver contributes to tension in some form. This is very key. Instead, what you affirm here is it breathes me. This phrase shifts focus away from the intentional manipulation of breath and instead emphasizes passive awareness. 
The goal is to simply strengthen this autonomous process. I know it seems a bit contradictory, but the purpose is just to passively observe. All of these exercises we have went through so far overlap to each other, and this is especially the case with breathing. Once you master this principle of it breathes me, it will contribute to all of the previous sensations. Again, when you are in a stressed or alerted state, the body releases stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol, which causes narrowing of blood vessels and of internal organs, especially those of the core. As a result, this might contribute to a cold sensation in this region. With the sun rays cue then, we counteract this. Here, you bring a scattered warmth into the core area, more specifically the solar plexus. This is sometimes regarded as the center of the nerves of all internal organs. The image you want to visualize is a sun in this region, an actual sun sending rays in all directions and colliding with all inner organs. And you will repeat something in the fashion of sun rays are glowing and sending warmth in all directions. Now why is having a cool forehead relevant? Imagine the last time you were in a stressful or anxious situation. Chances are that your face, and especially your forehead, would become boiling hot. Because your brain perceived a situation as threatening, and certain regions in the brain gets hyperactivated due to the increased blood flow. To increase alertness, that is. The fight or flight response once again. So in contrast to the previous exercises, coolness is associated with vasoconstriction, meaning reduced blood flow to that region. So when we imagine a cool forehead, this sensation mimics the natural experience of let's say a breeze coming along the face, which is associated with relaxation. You can simply chant and visualize, my forehead is cool and refreshing. Now there are no rights and wrongs the way you structure up all of these exercises. I would say don't try too hard and don't try to be perfect, just ease into it. And don't make it overwhelming. If you want, focus on the heaviness for the first week and then move on to warmth and all other aspects or try to experiment with all of them in one go. Now for some of you this might give you some icks, you might think it's too gimmicky or new agey, but I must remind you that these are research methods, there is evidence behind these. The world class Soviet boxers themselves used to do all of these things. And this was before engaging in hand to hand combat, they did not roll out a yoga mat and imagine rainbows and unicorns. Now one final thing that the Soviet sports psychologists would implement would be questionnaires to assess the psychological state of the athlete. And there were two aspects to this. Number one was performance and then we had emotional state. And as you can see here with the different values and descriptions, they always aimed to stay in a balanced state. For example, in performance, they wanted to stay between number one or three. And when it came to the emotional state, they wanted an emotionally balanced athlete. Not overexcited and not apathetic, somewhere in the middle, between the values of three and four. You can fill out a questionnaire like this after each training session. Thank you for watching this video. If you are interested in guides, ebooks and programs, all based on the original Soviet sources backed by modern sports science, visit my website.